Hey everyone and welcome back to another World of Warcraft Legion Alpha video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Frost Mage and the changes that have occurred to this spec. Spoiler alert, not a great many changes, still in a similar style to how it is on live, but there are a few things that you should know. And this video, as always, is taking a bottom-up look at the spec, so uh, you won't need to really know much to, um, to actually get something out of this video about the spec already. Now then, how are we going to do things? First of all, I'll go through the core abilities and rotation, then we will go through every ability, then we will cover every talent, and finally, we will take a gander at Ebonchill, which is our rather, um, rather nice-looking artifact weapon. So, let's start off with abilities, and really, we've got three that matter for the core rotation. Frost Bolt, 22,000 mana, 1.7 second cast. You launch a bolt of uh, frost at the enemy, causing 43,000 frost damage, and slowing movement speed by 30% for 15 seconds. Fair enough. We've then got Ice Lance. You fling instant uh, spell, you fling a shard of ice at the target, dealing about 11,000 frost damage. Its damage is doubled against frozen targets. And then we've got Frozen Orb. This launches an orb of swirling ice forward, which does um, 13,000 damage every second to all nearby enemy targets for 10 seconds. It gives you one charge of Fingers of Frost when it first reaches the target. Now, you might be thinking, what the balls is Fingers of Frost? So, it's one of the main mechanics of this spec, basically. Your successful frost bolts have a 15% chance of giving you a charge of it. Your blizzard and frozen orb ticks have a 5% chance of giving you a charge of it, and you can have a maximum of two charges. Fingers of frost will cause your next ice lance to deal a total of 380% more damage overall, and that is really the core of how this spec plays. Now, you do have one or two other little things before we get into the rest of the gameplay. Brain Freeze. Frost Bolts have a 10% chance to reset the cooldown of Frozen Orb, which, as you can see, is one minute, so you do want to get lots of Brain Freezes going on. We've also got Shatter. This multiplies the critical strike chance of your spells against Frozen Targets by 1.5 and um, adds an additional 50% chance. And then finally, we've got your Mastery, which is Icicles. Basically, whenever you do damage with a Frost Bolt, 40-odd percent of that damage is put into an Icicle, which hovers above you for 30 seconds. Um, now, this also increases the damage that your Water Elemental deals for the same amount. Up to five Icicles can be stored at once, and the excess Icicles that are generated will automatically be launched at the target. And if you cast an Ice Lance, all of your Icicles get launched at the target. So with all of that exposition done, let's just see what this looks like. First of all, we'll cast a few Frost Bolts. That's what a Frost Bolt looks like, and I'll just cast it at the target, which um, is, is is correctly scaled. So there you go, I just got a proc of Fingers of Frost. So now if I do a Ice Lance, first of all, look at all of my um, all of my Icicles. I cast Ice Lance, and it flings my Icicles off. Now we, um, we also have Frozen Orbs, so there we go. We fire one of those off. You see as soon as it hits the target, I got two charges of Fingers of Frost. I got two charges due to a talent. Normally, you would only get one. And that's how this spec plays. You're always casting your Frost Bolts while waiting for Fingers of Frost procs and then your Frozen Orb to reset. Now, in addition to this, we've got a ability called Freeze, which is on our Elemental. So, if I read Freeze here, blast enemies in an 8-yard radius with Frost, freezing them in place for up to 8 seconds. Damage cause may interrupt the effect, but more importantly, it gives you a charge of Fingers of Frost for each target hit by the Freeze. So, if I freeze these two guys over here, boom, we just got two charges of Fingers of Frost. So, Fingers of Frost is a major component of this spec, and you've just got the interplay, um, interplay between Freeze, uh, Frozen Orb, Frost Bolt, and Ice Lance as the core of the spec, and it is an extremely simple spec. From, from the very basic level. However, what I found is that once you add other abilities and mechanics in, especially a great one called Glacial Spike, um, you really do get some good gameplay. And by the way, you know, there may be mechanics here which al already exist. I, I don't know if Glacial Spike exists at the minute, um, but at the end of the day, I think it's very fun, so it's worth covering. Of course, these videos are made with... Of course, these videos are made with the intent of allowing absolutely everyone to understand the spec, even if you have zero prior knowledge. So, for those of you who play Frost Mages as a main, there will be some overlap. Let's quickly go through all of the spells. So, Blink blinks you forward. Pretty damn simple. Frost Nova freezes enemies within, uh, within an area. Let's just do a Blizzard on this deer. Because, you know, it's a critter and I have to kill it. It's one of my videos. So how we do things. Uh, Frostbolt, you've already covered. Comet Storm, very badass. It's a talent, but uh, I may as well show it off. 
throws those down, extremely cool. Basically, the comets hit down, they do AoE, 30-second uh, cooldown. Frozen Orb, which we've already covered, Cone of Cold, Blast of Cold in front of you that um, slows the target for 70%, uh, by 70% for 5 seconds. Ice Barrier gives you a shield of about 200k. Ice Block turns you into an Ice Cube, which makes you immune, but you can do cock all because you're an Ice Block. Conjure Refreshment, which will give you some delicious mana food. Counter Spell counters the enemy's spell cast, preventing any spell from that school of magic from being cast for 6 seconds. Ice Lance, which of course we've already covered. Icy Veins is one of your main cooldowns, accelerates your spell casting, giving you 30% haste and preventing spell pushback lasting for 20 seconds. Spell Steal will nab a beneficial magical effect from the target. The effect will last for a maximum of two minutes. Summon Water Elemental will bring this chap up beside you. Invisibility will make you invisible, which is pretty cool. It reduces your threat every second. And then when you're invisible, you're untargetable by enemies, lasting for 20 seconds. Um, let's see, what are, what other things? That Time Warp, that's your heroism slash bloodlust. Polymorph, turn your target into a sheep. It's pretty much all stuff we know. And really, that's, that's just about it. There are some things like, say, Frost Armor, which increases haste by 8% and causes enemies who strike you to be slowed by 30%. But other than that, that is pretty much all of our baseline talents. Let's go, or baseline and passives. Let's go through the talents. Ray of Frost, right. So for the next 10 seconds, you channel a beam of icy power at the enemy. You can channel a beam, and the, the differentiation between you channel and can channel is important. This will slow the target by 50% and do 26,000 frost damage every 0.9 seconds. Each time it does damage, its damage is increased by 20%. Now, it says there, can use it for the next 10 seconds. So what I could do is cast this for 3 seconds, then do a frozen orb, run about for 2 seconds, and then continue casting it. Um, but 10 seconds after I first hit that button, I will lose the ability. So let's go. I've just cast it. We can see, you know, the damage is ticking up, but I can do this. I can do, you know, those two, and we can go right back to our Ray of Frost, but it will then soon end. I don't think it's a very fun talent to use, honestly, because it's... I don't know, I just don't think it's particularly fun at the minute, I suppose. But anyway, we move on to Lonely Winter, so you can no longer summon your Water Elemental. However, Frost Bolt, Ice Lance, Frozen Orb, and Icicles do 25% more damage. So that compensates for, obviously, all the damage this guy does, and, of course, the fact that you can use Freeze from that to um, generate your Fingers of Frost. We've got Bone Chilling. Whenever you attempt to chill a target, you gain Bone Chilling, which lasts 6 seconds and stacks up to 16 times. Each stack increases all frost damage that you do by 0.5%. Basically, it gives you 8% more frost damage after, you know, you, you've ramped up uh, the damage or, or, you know, you've been attacking the target for long enough. So, Shimmer. Now, this is basically Blink, but it doesn't interrupt your spell cast. So, I'm going to uh, I'm going to do a frost bolt here, and halfway through the cast, I'm going to cast Shimmer to show what that looks like. So, there you go. And, as you can see, I was able to Blink mid-spell cast, which means I don't lose that kind of GCD of, um, of damage. We've got Cauterize, so Fatal Damage will instead put you to 35% health. You then burn for 28% max health over 6 seconds. While burning, movement slowing effects are suppressed and your movement speed is increased by 150%, but it cannot occur more than any uh, every 2 minutes. Cold Snap, you get 2 charges of Ice Block, and Ice Block heals you for 3% max health every 1 second. So moving on to 45, we've got Mirror Image, 2 minute cooldown, you... Um, create three copies of yourself. They, you know, hurl um, your attacks at the target. It's, it's mirror image. We all know what that is. Rune of power, a little bit different now from what I gather. So this puts a rune on the ground for 10 seconds and increases your spell damage by 50% whenever you stand within it. So if you are in a, maybe a situation where you can Comet Storm, Ebon Bolt, Frozen Orb, do all of the Fingers of Frost from that within the eight seconds, like that's really going to be a great time to use your Rune of Power. But this is a 45 second recharge with two charges. Basically, if you know, okay, I've got a lot of damage coming up in my rotation and I can stand still for, I can afford to stand still-ish or at least in the same area for uh, for 10 seconds, then you'll know that's a pretty darn good time to do your, um, to do your uh, runic. What's it called? Rune of power. That's it. Anyway, encounters flow. Magical energy flows through you while in combat, building up to 20% increased damage and then diminishing down to 4% increased damage, cycling every 10 seconds. Onwards to the 60 tier, Ice Nova. This will cause a uh, a whirl of icy wind around the target, um, enemy or ally, so you can cast this on your friend, and anything near your friend would be hurt by it. 
This deals 63,000 frost damage to all enemies within 8 yards and freezes them in place for 2 seconds, which is kind of cool. And uh, it says here the primary enemy will take 100% increased damage. Of course, there is a obvious enough synergy between uh, this and Shatter, which is pretty darn cool. If I just drag Ice Nova down here, um, I'll just drag it over Frozen Touch. So we could uh, Ice Nova this and um, actually I'll just get a Fingers of Frost. And then we Ice Nova and then we'll uh, whack it with that. And it did a big thing of damage, which is pretty cool. That said, can, can you actually freeze? I don't know if you can. Uh, yeah, I don't actually know if you can freeze um, one of those guys. Anyhow, I'll, I'll just uh, I'll try Frost Nova. Ah, but you can freeze the smaller ones. Interesting. Anyway, that's Ice Nova. Let's move on to Frozen Touch. Whenever you activate this, you instantly generate two charges off Fingers of Frost. Very exciting. And then Bitter Cold. The damage that Frozen Orb does is increased by 10%, and it generates two charges of Fingers of Frost when it first reaches the target. That, of course, is going up from, um, from the one that it normally generates. Icy Flows, whenever you use this, you've got three charges of it, 20 second recharge. It means your next spell can be cast while moving. Ring of Frost will summon down a ring of, you know, frost on the ground. It's, uh, it's been in the game for a little while at this stage. Any enemies who stand in it are incapacitated for 10 seconds. And then there's Ice Ward, which will give you two charges of Frost Nova as a baseline passive. Moving on to the 90 tier Frost Bomb. This puts a Frost Bomb on the target for 12 seconds. Your Ice Lances that benefit from Shatter will trigger the release of a wave of freezing ice, dealing 32,000 frost damage to the target and uh, 20,000 frost damage to all other targets within 10 yards. Let's do a Frost Bomb. And we'll, uh, we'll do it in this Raiders Training Dummy. And uh, we'll chuck that out. There you go. Sort of did some AoE damage, which is pretty cool. And overall, yeah, it's, it's cool enough ability. You'll want to sort of maintain uptime in that, I suppose. And here I could just, you know, Ice Nova and uh, cast these off. As you can see, it's doing the explosion, which is pretty cool. Moving on to Unstable Magic. This will cause your Arcane ba Blast, Fireball, and Frostbolt. I just your Frostbolt, because you're playing Frost. They should really change the tooltip. Anyway, to have a 20% increased chance, or just a 20% chance, to explode on impact, dealing an additional 50% damage to the target and all other enemies within 8 yards. Then we've got Arctic Gale. Damage dealt by Blizzard is increased by 30%, and the area covered is increased by 20%. That was not Blizzard. That was, um, that was Comet Storm. Where the hell did I put Blizzard? Uh, yeah, there is Blizzard. I just want to use it so you can see what it's like. Uh, it's a little bit bigger. Uh, okay, the Blizzarders went over there. Anyway, that's Blizzard. So we move on to Thermal Void. Casting Ice Lance extends your icy veins by two seconds, so that makes your main cooldown a bit more powerful. Now, this is the awesome one. I've been waiting all video to get to Glacial Spike. Conjure a massive spike of ice that you chuck at your target. It merges all of your current icicles sort of together into it, and then it uh, flies out and impales your target, dealing 110,000 damage, plus the damage stored in your icicles, and it does require five icicles to cast, and also freezes the target in place for up to four seconds. This is so cool, and it's got the passive effect that Ice Lance does not launch your icicles anymore, so I'm just going to generate loads of icicles here by spamming out Frost Bolts, and we will drag Glacial Spike down, uh, I believe it's already, yeah, it's actually on the, the four button, so there you go, I've got f um, five icicles at the minute, which means I can now do a Glacial Spike, which will do this. What a cool looking ability, and uh, yeah, I, I just think it's extremely cool, and we'll do one more. Now this is not in a cooldown of any sort, it's just a new mechanic. Basically, icicles are a secondary resource when um, Glacial Spike is involved because you want to generate five of them, and then throw them into a Glacial Spike. I think that's really cool, it kind of adds another layer of interaction and stuff with this spec, which I really do appreciate quite a bit. Now, uh, we then move on to Comet Storm, which I've already sort of shown you a little bit, but this calls down a series of seven icy comets to the target. Each of them will deal um, 21,000 frost damage to all enemies within four yards of its impact point. And there is what that looks like. Very cool looking indeed. Now, we do have Ebon Chill itself. So Ebon Chill is our artifact weapon. Its active ability is Ebon Bolt. This does 156,300 uh, Shadow Frost damage and gives you two charges of Fingers of Frost on a 45 second cooldown. So here's an Ebon Bolt. There you go. We chuck it out. It does a little bit of a bendy thing and hits the target. And I now get to do two Fingers of Frost. And well, that, that's pretty much it for Ebon Bolt. It's, um, yeah, it's cool enough. It ties into the rotation every once, uh, you know, where every now and then. Maybe it could be a bit more interesting, but uh, it's nice that it at least gives you those charges of Fingers of Frost and therefore does sort of um, play into the gameplay of the spec. 
And then just to go through the major artifact traits, Black Ice, Icicles have a chance to become empowered by Ebonchill, dealing 100% more damage. Yeah, that's not something players have control over, so it's kind of boring. Uh, chilled to the core, activating Icy Veins encases you in ice, increasing frost damage dealt by 40%, which is a very big throughput increase. And then we've got It's Cold Outside, your Water Elemental now casts... A Jagged Shard instead of Water Bolt, which has a chance to generate Fingers of Frost. I think that'll certainly make the spec feel a little bit more fast to play indeed. So I suppose that really is it for what I what I want to uh, to cover with this spec. I kind of got through this video quicker than I usually get through them. Overall, yeah, so it's uh, quite similar to the Warlords of Draenor stuff from what I gather on the internet. This is by no means a super, you know, amazing professional, um, you know, pro level play, but... If you've never played a mage before, which uh, statistically is probably most people, or, you know, have never played Frost recently, um, hopefully this will have got you up to speed with it. I think it's actually quite fun. Um, indeed, yeah, I like the mechanics, I like the way you've got the Fingers of Frost generation going on, um, maybe Rune of Power could end up being fun, I, I'm not 100% sure on that, it's, it's certainly not as bad as I remember Rune of Power with my Arcane Mage in Warlords, and I did not enjoy that whatsoever. Um, though I did like the idea behind it, but that's kind of besides the point. But yeah, it's got, you know, this very basic core of a few different abilities. What I like, though, is that when you add the talents in, it kind of gives you a little bit more to worry about some more stuff going on, which is certainly quite good. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's got promise. Overall, I'm uh, decently pleased with what they've done. Of course, if you play a Frost Mage, do let me know what you think down in the comments, because your opinion's probably far more relevant than mine. I'm just here to roughly give people information. Anyhow, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think about the spec down in the comments, and I will see you next time.